Right, we're going to work out the um, reactions and shear force and bending for this beam. I'll make it fairly awkward. That's our A. That's our B. That's one metre. Um, there's a point load here of 40, a point load here of 20, and a point load here of 10. So that's one metre from the end to there. Uh, and you need to know that because of the UDL running the entire length of the beam as well. <coughs> so it's one metre from the end to our A. It's 1.5 metres from our A to the 40. Two metres between those. One metre to there. And again 1.5 metres uh, between our B and 10. So <coughs> we're going to have to work out the reactions first. And I'm going to set it out such that I'll draw my shear force diagram here and my bending moment. I'll draw that a bit straighter. I'll draw my shear force diagram there um, and I'll draw my bending moment diagram underneath. But anyway, uh, let's work out uh, the reactions first. So for RA, take moments at RB. Taking moments at RB means put your pivot at RB. Now, <coughs> we're going to have to convert this UDL into point loads first. So for this section here, we're going to have to have a point equivalent point load. And I haven't given you the strength of the UDL yet. So let's say the UDL is constantly 10 kilonewtons for every metre of run. Uh, that's all well and good. <coughs> so this is one metre. And the UDL is 10 meter, 10 kilonewtons for every one meter. So the equivalent point load will be 10 kilonewtons. The UDL, uh, well, we can do all of this middle bit in one go. So the UDL in all of that middle bit will be 10 times by the meters it acts over. So it's um, four and a half meters in total. That's the distance across there. And it acts centrally. So 10 times 4 and a half is 45 kilonewtons. And then the UDL equivalent for this overhang is uh, going to be 10 kilonewtons times 1 and a half, which will be 15 kilonewtons. So we've ended up with s um, six point loads, if you like, and three of them are, having, are from converting the UDL. But that's the way it goes. So I've got 10 kilonewtons from the UDL, 40 that was already there, 45 from the UDL, 20 that was already there, 15 from the UDL, and 10 that was already there. Right then, let's work out anti uh, clockwise equals anti-clockwise when we're balancing our moments. <coughs> so we'll start from the left of the beam and go across. So we've got this 10. If the beam was allowed to pivot here, if it was just resting like a seesaw there, um, that 10 would push down and it would be going anti-clockwise if it was allowed to spin. RA would push up, that would be clockwise if it were allowed to spin. This would be anti-clockwise, this would be anti-clockwise, this would be anti-clockwise, that would be clockwise, and that would be clockwise. <coughs> right then. So the first clockwise one we've got, we've got RA times by its distance to the pivot which is going to be four and a half, because it's one and a half, add two, add one. So one, two, three, four, point five. So RA times 4.5, that's one. That's that one done, that clockwise done. The next clockwise is going to be 15 times by that distance. Now the UDL always acts halfway along its run. So if that's one and a half, that's got to be 0 0.75 metres. So it's going to add on 15 times by 0 0.75. And then we're going to have to add on <coughs> the next UDL. Uh, sorry, the next uh, clockwise, which is this one, which is going to be 10 times by its distance to the pivot, which is one and a half. Now all that's just the clockwise side. All that's got to be balanced with the anti-clockwise lot. So anti-clockwise, I'll do that in another colour. So anti-clockwise 
we've got 10 kilonewtons times by its distance to this pivot <laughs> right then well it's one meter across there so that must be half a meter to get to our a so it's going to be one add two add one and a half add a half um, one, two, three, four, so it's going to be five metres, so ten times five, because we have to relate it to this pivot point, otherwise there's no point having a pivot point. Add on the next clock, uh, anti-clockwise, which is going to be this one, which will be 40 times by its distance to RB, which is going to be three, because it's a two add one. And then add on <coughs> the next anti-clockwise, which is going to be that UDL equivalent of 45 times by that's acting centrally to this uh, uh, to this span here so that spans four and a half so if we're acting centrally that must be 2.25 uh, lever arm and then we've got our final anti-clockwise this one <coughs> which is going to be 20 times by its distance of just one which is already given Right, so some number crunching to do here. So RA um, times 4.5 is 4.5 RA plus, and then we've got, I'll get a calculator, but feel free to check, uh, 15 times 0.75 uh, is 11.25 plus 10 times 1.5 is of course 15, and that's going to be balanced by the anti-clockwise uh, I'll go back to that green so 10 times 5 is 50 plus 40 times 3 is 120 uh, plus 45 times 2.25 which is 101.25 plus and then 20 times 1 is 20 let's work this out then <coughs> so I'll get it all on one line now so we've got 4.5 RA add on well we can work out 11.25 um, and 15 and that's 26.25 equals and then all the green ones added up together so we've got 50 plus 120 plus 101.25 plus 20 gives us a total of 291.25 right we'll just to uh, quickly rearrange this we'll take this plus across so we're going to end up with um, 4.5 RA equals and it's going to be 291.25 and we've taken plus 26.25 across it's going to become minus 26.25 slowly get in there <coughs> uh, so we're going to end up with uh, 291.25 take away 26.25 equals 265 so 4.5 RA equals 265 so RA on its own must equal 265 divided by 4.5 so 265 divided by 4.5 is 58.8 recurring kilonewtons phew right <coughs> I'll tell you what I'll do RB to the left hand side I'll be a bit quicker doing this as well so keep up so we'll choose another colour so for RB take moments at RA this time we're having our pivot point here uh, I think for your sake I'm going to redraw that um, let's just let's just sketch this out because so we've got RA which we've just worked out we've got a UDL all the way along it you'll thank me for this um, that's one we've got 40 kilonewtons there which is one and a half meters away from that we've also got 20 kilonewtons there 
which is two meters away from that. A meter away from that's RB, which is what we're working out. And then one and a half meters to the end is 10. Let's put on our UDLs that we've worked out. We know there's a 15 kilonewton UDL equivalent there. We know there's a 45 kilonewton equivalent UDL there. And we know that there's a 10 kilonewton equivalent UDL there. <coughs> right then, working out RB then, which is another colour. So for RB, take moments at RA, which means put your pivot at RA this time. So it's a beam now allowed to spin like a seesaw. So this 10 is going to push down, that's clockwise. That 15 is going to push down clockwise. That's going to spin it anti-clockwise. That's going to spin it clockwise. That's going to spin it clockwise. That's going to spin it clockwise. Um, that's not going to spin it at all, RA, because it's bang on the point. That's just going to push it upwards. It's not going to spin, so it's not included. And that's going to spin it anti-clockwise. So now in a balancing act between clockwise and anti-clockwise, uh, I'll start at <coughs> I'll start with this ten because that's where we're at. In fact, we'll do clockwise first. So clockwise equals anti-clockwise makes sense. So the first clockwise one we come to, uh, I'm gonna I'll do it in another color. So clockwise one we come to first is this forty times by its distance to this pivot, which is one and a half. That's in its own bracket. Add on the next clockwise one, which is 45 times by, well, we know that's mid span. So that's 2.25 again. That's from before. And then the next clockwise one, which is going to be 20 times by its distance to that pivot, <coughs> which is going to be 2 add 1.5, which will be 3.5. Add on the next clockwise one, which will be 15 times by its distance to the pivot. Well, 15, that must be 0 0.75 to there. So it's going to be 1.5, add 2, add 1, add 0.75. Um, so it's going to be 4.5, add 0 0.75, which will be 5.25. So it's the distance from the 15 all the way to this pivot, which is 5.25. Um, and then the final clockwise, which will be 10, times by its distance to the pivot, uh, which will be four and a half, add on a meter and a half, um, so which will be six. Uh, all right, then that's balanced by the anti-clockwise ones, of which there's only uh, two. So anti-clockwise, you've got 10 times by its distance to the pivot, well, if that's 1, the whole cantilever, that's got to be 0 0.5. So 10 times 0 0.5. Add on, and then, of course, RB, which is what we're trying to find out. So it's got to be in there. Times by its distance to RA, which is 4.5. So the rest of it's just a bit of number crunching now. Uh, so we've got uh, 40 times 1.5 is 60. Add on. Um, and then we've got 45 times 2.25, which will 101.25. Add on. And then we've got 20 times 3.5, which is, of course, 70. And then add on 15 times by 5.25, which is 78.75. Then add on 10 times 6 is 60. That's got to be balanced by 10 times 0 0.5 is 5, add on 4.5 RB. Fair enough, we can start to simplify further now. So all the red numbers added up um, are going to be, so 60 plus 101.25 plus 70 plus 78 point seven five plus sixty again equals three hundred and seventy um, clockwise balanced with anti clockwise 
a 4.5 RB plus this 5 kilonewtons here. Well, we'll take plus 5 across, and that'll become minus 5. So we're going to have 370 um, minus 5, because we've taken it across, equals 4.5 RB. So 370 minus 5 is, of course, 365. So 365 divided by 4.5 gives us RB, which will be... Uh, 365 divided by 4.5 equals 81.11111 right point one recurring um, <coughs> kilonewtons now just to pick myself up on the rounding I did earlier that would actually be rounded to point 0.9 because it was 8 recurring 88888 so of course that would round it up to 9 so that's uh, my fault Pull the old, old man up to that, that would actually be 9, which is going to make sense when we check it now. So I've got 81.1 for RA, so we're going to do a check. We're going to check forces up, bounces with forces coming down. So forces up, we've got RA, which was 58.9 um, recurring. So 58.9 recurring, add on the other force coming up, which is RB, 81.1 recurring, has to balance all the forces coming down. So we've got, and we can add them up. You can either do the UDL as one, one, or keep it as separate ones. We've, we've, so we've got 10, add 40, add 45, add 20, add 15, add 10. So it's got to be 10, add 40, Add 45, um, add 20, add 15, add 10. Right, <coughs> so 58.9 recurring plus 81.1 recurring gives you 140. So this needs to equal 140, so 10. <coughs> plus 40, plus 45, plus 20, plus 15, plus 10 equals, yep, 140, bang on. So that checks. I think I'm going to pause it there. I'll do another video that captures how to work out to show shear force for this and for bending. Uh, okay.